Now, before we start moving, let's take a quick look around. This is Crestwood, the largest area we have ever built, bigger than all of Dragon Age 2. This is actually far from the biggest area in Dragon Age Inquisition. With Crestwood, we've come to an area with a small town. The region takes its name from that area. It's part of Ferelden, which was relatively untouched by the blight. And we've come here in large part because this is a place we've already visited. The Inquisition has established its foothold here. We have taken control of an area, and our men are in position. And in response to that, enemies have decided to counterattack. Receiving word that that was coming, we've decided to come here because as Inquisitor, one of our core goals is to lead from the front, to be an inspiration to the people that we protect and the people that serve with us. If we make our way down to the beach, we can see what appear to be war boats in the water. That's a bad sign. We've probably got the enemy already making their landing. Also, we can see the coruscating green wall of energy. That's a symptom of the larger problem facing Ferelden right now. That giant breach in the sky that has ripped open a hole between the veil, the thing that keeps out the demons, is causing anomalies all throughout the world. This breach that we see here is a rift under the water. It's inaccessible to us at this point, but it's something we want to resolve long term. How we do that? Well, I'll leave that to you to find out when we play the game. In Dragon Age Inquisition, there will be a lot of fighting. Conflict is really the heart and soul of the franchise. And coming up ahead of us, of course, we have the enemies making their landing. As we do so, one thing that's very important to note is that combat does not automatically scale when you have explore regions. The enemies there will be as tough as they're going to be, meaning sometimes they'll be far too difficult for you to defeat on first encounter. Other times, you'll be over-leveled from them, which is in fact the case for what we're encountering here. Yeah. One of our goals with Inquisition is to make sure that you have as much control over your gameplay experience as possible. To that end, we can use direct control of the camera. Close in with a lock-on camera to make sure you're tracking your target and never lose your focus. Further back allows you to see more of the battlefield and spread your attacks out accordingly. These men we see here are our men. They belong to the Inquisition. They've pledged to work with us. And they've fallen under attack, leaving us with a choice. Do we have them stay with the wounded, patch up as many of our troops as possible, possibly raise them morale? Do we have them move to defend the village with whoever can, whoever can still walk? Or do we send them back to the keep, having them focus their efforts on preserving the power base we've already built up? We're going to perceive that as the greater good for this playthrough. So that'll be the choice we select. In every able soldier on their feet, what are you defending the key? And Chris is I. Of course. Choices, of course, are defined by their consequence, what effect they have on your game. As we'll talk about a little later, sometimes this takes place in terms of content that you might see or might not see. But here you can see a specific example of Varric being quite upset at our decision. The reactions of your followers and your interactions are something that we consider to be the heart of the Dragon Age franchise. And that annoyance on Varric's part is going to come back to haunt us as we play through the game later on. Opportunities for 
discovering opportunities to explore off the beaten path, opportunities to find ancient lore, cool treasures, ancient mystical items, or, as we'll see up here, the landing zone for the Red Templars' boats provides us with an opportunity to attack our enemies as a counterattack. We can use uh, fire that we've equipped, brought with us for, for just this kind of purpose, and use it to destroy the boats, cutting off the retreat, preventing them from getting in our way later on in the course of the game. Resources. 
and you need to make them count. At this point, we're going to jump ahead until after we've finished securing the police. Decisions in Dragon Age Inquisition have a consequence to the world and to your gameplay. Decisions are tough and they have hard hitting consequences. In many cases, decisions you make will have lasting implications throughout the game.
left, you can see what appear to be a series of ramps, maybe stairs, something that shows sign of human habitation, which gives us another point of interest that we would want to explore at some point during our adventures here in the Western Approach. And Inquisition is absolutely filled with these kinds of locations. And they're places for you to earnestly explore. There won't be quests holding your hand. There won't be characters telling you specifically to go to these locations. Instead, as Inquisitor, it'll be up to you to decide where you and where the Inquisition's focus is going to lie. However, taking party members with you ultimately provides many advantages. They're not just helpful in combat, but they can call out things that they spot in the distance, give you hints of things you might want to explore in your adventures. There's something very, very safe in the environment. Our foes have 
treated, likely setting up an ambush for us. But that gives us an opportunity to look at how the battlefield can change according to the way you play through Dragon Age Inquisition. Here we spot some archers located up there on a rickety bridge, giving us a great opportunity to eliminate from the battle rather than having to chase them down. We'll freeze at least two of these guards here in order to keep them in place, clearing a path for the Inquisitor to go and destroy the bridge. ourselves facing down the enchanter leading these cultists. As, an, as a magical unit, he's able to provide powerful combat benefits to his allies and to lay down glyphs that are traps for us, making him a very dangerous opponent indeed. Blair's going to use a mix of both real time and our tactical view in order to lay out a strategy where ideally we cordon off the enchanter, keeping him isolated and forcing the troops to split their attacks while we then use dispel to tear down the enchanter's magical shielding in order to make him an easy target for the rest of the group. Ideally, if him eliminated, we'll then be able to end the combat well with something of a bag. <laughs> decision will affect the way that your game plays. 
Once you control a key, you can use it as a base of operations to affect the region more fundamentally in ways that are major, visible, and affect your game. Do you want to rebuild an ancient monument, increasing the notoriety and renown of the Inquisition? Or open the West Gate, giving you access to locked off parts of the area? Or do you want to cap vents that are spewing poisonous gases, harvesting the resource for your alchemy, and giving you access to parts of the area that were otherwise inaccessible? You can't do all of them. You have to use your resources wisely. Now, if you remember, we saw a cave before that was, that was blocked by poisonous gases. So if we cap the vents, I think we might just be able to reach them. The first thing you'll notice is we return to the cave. So we've had a fundamental effect, not just on its appearance, but on its inside. It's been filled to the brim with the Inquisition soldiers. Thank you. 